Hi, my name is Robert Allen. I'm the best-selling author and CMO, which is Chief Mindset Officer for the amazing company called Rx. And welcome to The Boss, the business orientation system. And what you'll learn in The Boss is how to build the skills of a professional, how to be the boss of your own business and your own life. And in The Boss, the great Tim Sales and others will share with you how to develop the essential network marketing skills of inviting and presenting. And I'll share with you how to develop the essential life skills of building dreams and persisting until they become reality. I see my goal as CMO of Rx to help inspire you and to move you not only to achieve success with Rx, but in all areas of your life. And then how to learn to inspire and to move others to also achieve success. It's all about stories, success stories, your story. How do you go from where you are, your before story, to where you want to be, your after story? And showing others how to do the same. Now, if you'll forgive me, I'm going to tell you a little bit of my story. Somewhere in the boss, you probably watched a short introduction of the highlights of my career as your CMO. It's a best-selling story. I call it the Bob, the best of the best of Bob. But these highlights are not the whole story. Life is rarely a straight shot to the top. It certainly wasn't in my case, and I doubt it will be like that for you either. Your career with Rx will have its ups and downs. The ups can be exciting. Extra income, new friends, personal growth, improved health. But if you want your after story to be one of ultimate success, all of us need to learn how to handle the downs. And there are at least five essential mindset skills that I'd like to share with you in my section of The Boss to show you how to handle the downs. Now, for now, let's start talking about what I call skill number one, and that's expectations. It's all about expectations. If they tell you right from the beginning that you'll make big money, and then you find yourself a few months later making little or none, it's easy to get your expectations bruised. But if you know the whole truth, that there will be small wins and surprise setbacks on the way to big success, then maybe you'll be better prepared. Has this ever happened to you? Something unexpected takes you by surprise. At first, you perceive the event as bad, a real downer, a setback. But the setback forces you to make some tough decisions. And in hindsight, it turns out that those tough decisions cause you to choose a new life path toward amazing possibilities. Well, such a bad thing happened to me, and if it hadn't happened, we wouldn't be having this conversation. My bad event occurred at the start of my career. I just graduated from Brigham Young University with my Master's in Business Administration. Now, don't let my MBA impress you. I graduated in the one-third of my class that made the top two-thirds possible. What's worse, I graduated during a terrible economic recession and no one was hiring, least of all those graduating in the bottom of their class. I sent out applications to all the major companies, General Foods, General Mills, General Electric, General Motors, and generally every major company I could think of, and one by one, the rejection letters began to pile up. 30 rejections in all. I was devastated. This was bad. Really, really bad. I couldn't even reach the first rung of the corporate ladder. Well, after a few weeks of sheer panic, I had a hunch. A few years earlier, I'd read a book, Think and Grow Rich, by Napoleon Hill, containing 13 powerful principles of success. To think and grow rich. Sounded good to me, but I knew it would take more than just thinking. I would need a vehicle, some business startup, some investment to pour my energies into. And that's when I spotted another book in my brother-in-law's bookshelf, How I Turned $1,000 into a $1 Million Dollars in Real Estate in My Spare Time by William Nickerson. That's it, I thought. One day, I'll get a job, and in my spare time, I'll make my million investing in real estate on the side. At least, that was the plan when I got my MBA, a career and real estate on the side. But surprise, surprise, nobody would hire me. And here I was, a broke, unemployed college graduate in the worst of economic times at a crossroads. Should I continue to look for a traditional job or take the road less traveled by? 
You guessed it. I decided to think and grow rich in real estate, and as crazy as it sounds, a few short years later, after a lot of stupid mistakes, I was a net worth millionaire. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and I, well, I took the one less traveled by, and that made all the difference. Now, I don't know about you. Has life ever forced you to stand at the crossroads and make tough decisions? As you learn to succeed with Rx, things won't always go according to your plan. Now, when I see someone at convention walk across the stage to receive their accolades of achievement, I know that's not the whole story. If we were to peel back the curtain, we'd see that the reason they earned the right to our standing ovation is that when no one was looking, during the downtimes, they persisted. When their upline abandoned them and their downline disappeared, they remembered why they got started in the first place. They had a dream, and they were willing to start over again and do whatever it takes. That's why they became presidents and CEOs and chairmen and chairwomen. That's what leaders do. It's a skill to pursue your dream, even when sometimes it feels like a nightmare. As Winston Churchill said, success is the ability to go from failure to failure without losing your enthusiasm. In my case, even though I was discouraged, I kept following that hunch, my intuition. It just felt right, even though it wasn't obvious from the beginning. And then I had another hunch to write my own book. Well, what shall I call it? How about Nothing Down? a proven program that shows you how to buy real estate with little or no money down. I'm sure you're familiar with this famous quote, that the moment one commits oneself, then providence, the universe, moves too. A whole stream of events issues from the decision, raising in one's favor all manner of unforeseen incidents and meetings and material assistance, which no man could have dreamt would have come his way. In other words, when you make the decision, the universe responds and starts bringing to pass all the things to make your decision happen. Well, I certainly understand firsthand how providence can move and bring to pass, at least in my case, a whole stream of wonderful events leading to the publication of my first book, Nothing Down, by one of the world's largest publishers, Simon & Schuster. To promote it, I made the audacious claim Send me to any city, take away my wallet, give me a $100 bill. And in 72 hours, I'll buy an excellent piece of real estate using none of my own money. Yes, I'm the crazy guy who said that. And yes, the Los Angeles Times called my bluff and sent me to San Francisco with a Times reporter by my side, who took away my wallet, gave me 100 bucks, and watched as I proceeded to buy seven properties in the next 57 hours and gave him $20 back in change. The headline on the front page of the Times financial section read, Buying Homes Without Cash, Boastful Investor Accepts Times Challenge and Wins. Now with this publicity, Nothing Down became an even bigger bestseller, remaining on the New York Times bestseller list for 58 weeks, becoming the all-time best-selling real estate book in history. As of my last royalty report, 1,270,045 books and counting. <laughs> my next book, Creating Wealth, also sold over a million copies and spent 28 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list. That's why I've been featured in major publications such as the Los Angeles Times, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, Barron's, Money Magazine, Newsweek, Time Magazine, Red Book, and the Reader's Digest. And I've appeared on hundreds of radio and TV shows, including Good Morning America, Merv Griffin, Regis Philbin, Larry King, Neil Cavuto, to name a few. So I guess not getting a job after college wasn't such a bad thing after all, was it? Thank God. I was at the top. And then, surprise. You guessed it. Another one of those bad things. I'd invested every dime I had into one risky real estate project and guaranteed the loan using all of our assets, including our new mountain home in Sundance Ski Resort, just across the way from Robert Redford's own mountain home. It was 10,000 square feet of the most magnificent architecture, our dream home. And on one snowy day, a freak avalanche roared down Mount Timpanogos 
and destroyed our dream. In minutes, it was gone. And to make matters worse, the insurance company, citing an obscure act of God clause in the fine print of our insurance policy, wouldn't pay our claim. What? So now we have a worthless property securing a very real $2 million business loan, and the bank gets nervous and calls the loan and starts liquidating our assets. Now, without boring you with all the bad details, my wife and I and our young family moved to California, millions in debt, to start all over. We were wiped out, literally by a real avalanche, leading to eventually an embarrassing bankruptcy. Yes, bankruptcy. No, not fun. I read somewhere, though, that some of the most successful people in history are members of this exclusive club, the Bankruptcy Club. Abraham Lincoln, Mark Twain, Henry Ford, Walt Disney, even Larry King himself. Well, welcome to the club. The guy who wrote nothing down had nothing left. Now, where is the silver lining in this? Well, it was humbling, to say the least. It certainly drove me to my knees. And I had some profoundly enlightening conversations with my Heavenly Father during those dark days. In looking back now, as hard as they were, I wouldn't trade away those learning experiences for all the money in the world. With the help of a friend and business partner, Tom Painter, I was forced to create a new series of seminars. And starting at the bottom and buried in debt, we created a seminar business that generated $100 million in revenue over the next five years. Thousands of graduates with incredible million-dollar success stories. And at every seminar, I would tell our eager wealth creators the whole story. Things were starting to look good again. But then, surprise, surprise, Saddam Hussein invades Kuwait. Remember that? The world watches as an avalanche of bombs falls on Baghdad. With such uncertainty, nobody is attending our real estate wealth trainings. I mean, nobody. So how do you suddenly meet a 200-person payroll with zero cash flow? You don't. And once again, it's time to close the doors and wait for the war clouds to blow over. Are you sensing a theme here? This is the life of an entrepreneur. And sometimes answers come to you to solve your problems from the strangest sources. Now, when our solution came, I didn't recognize it. It was my wife, Daryl, who had the hunch this time. And boy, was it a good one. A friend of hers introduced her to a brand new network marketing company that was marketing nutritional products. Network marketing? Me? I was so skeptical, I wanted nothing to do with it. After all, I was the famous author, and I wouldn't want to align myself with one of those fly-by-night kind of companies. So when my wife handed me the application, I refused to sign it. We needed the money, and I still stubbornly refused. Not going to do it. And I uttered the seven most foolish words I've ever said to my dear wife. Honey, you can have all the money. <laughs> but in my mind, I'm thinking, there will never be any money from this. This is a little business for little people. Boy, was I wrong. My wife and her friend launched their little business together. While I was struggling to bring money in the door, my wife starts making some little checks that got bigger and bigger. And I'm watching as these checks are going right into my wife's bank account. And I finally had to admit, when her income exceeded my income, that I had been wrong about network marketing. Turns out we had gotten in just at the right time, and things just mushroomed. And the little business for little people started generating bigger and bigger checks. And over the next few years, we rose to become the number 10 earners in the entire company. I say we because by this time, I jumped on board with Gusto, and we reached the Million Dollar Club. And of the top 25 income earners in the entire company, 19 of them were in our downline. Well, technically, in my wife's downline. And now you know the whole story of our venture into network marketing. Now, I've got to give great credit to my great wife, Daryl. She's been with me through this wild ride, and that's why I love her. Not just because she's beautiful and smart, which she is, but because she's tough and strong. Now, this extra financial cushion from our network marketing venture afforded me the luxury of time freedom. 
You know that concept that people dream about but rarely enjoy? Time freedom? Well, after things get rolling with hardly any extra effort, you earn steady streams of weekly checks. Network marketing. It truly works if you work it. It's amazing. Trust me. I know. Now, about this time, the real estate market took off again, and my seminars were huge, teaching hundreds of thousands of people all over the world. And I started to write again. I love to write. I love to teach people how to achieve financial freedom, to inspire and to empower people to achieve their destiny. It's my song. What's your song? Now, some of my most famous books come from this period of my life, Multiple Streams of Income, How to Generate a Lifetime of Unlimited Wealth, followed by the colossal mega bestseller, The One Minute Millionaire, The Enlightened Way to Wealth, co-authored with Mark Victor Hansen of Chicken Soup for the Soul fame, then Cracking the Millionaire Code and Cash in a Flash, Fast Money in Slow Times. These books and seminars have reached millions of people all over the world and by one estimate, helping to launch thousands of enlightened millionaires. And our research shows that our students have earned billions in combined profits and have contributed tens of millions to hundreds of charitable causes. I think my most memorable TV appearance was when Neil Cavuto of Fox News challenged me to bring 101 of our millionaires on live television to explain how they had achieved this kind of success. It was exciting. Yet of all the millionaire stories, this is my favorite success story. I was speaking in South Africa about multiple streams of income when an African woman approached me to thank me. Turns out that while living in Nigeria, a friend had given her a photocopy, yes, a photocopy of one of my books. She and her husband read it and used the ideas there to create financial success. Now she's leading a group of women out of poverty by sharing these same ideas with them. I'm so proud of this enlightened entrepreneur. And then another bad event, the crisis of 2008. It caught all of us by surprise, didn't it? The mother of all financial avalanches. I had a few of my own streams of income dry up because of it. Did you? You know, that's why you need multiple streams of income. It's like insurance. When one stream dries up, you have several other streams that are still flowing. It smooths out the bumps. That's why when an opportunity to earn some extra money on the side that you can start for a few hundred dollars, you have to look at it. Life is full of so many surprises that you have to be prepared. And just as we were coming out of the Great Recession, my wife and I got a shocking phone call in the spring of 2011. The entire leadership team from our network marketing company resigns en masse. The whole team announces that they're through. They quit. What? We love these guys. Why? They've left to build their own dream, to start their own enterprise, a startup. Are these guys crazy? Can there be a worse time to start a new company from scratch? Well, we get them on the telephone. What's going on? And they share their vision of a new company. Rx, they call it. Well, if anyone has the experience to pull it off, it's Fred and Mark and Jeff and Riley with their new partner, Deanna, and others. And the network marketing genius expert, Tim Sales, had jumped in as well. And other top leaders from the top 25 income earners of our previous company. Should we jump with them or hang on to our secure streams of income? Again, it was just a hunch with a lot of risk. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And long we stood and looked down one as far as we could to where it bent in the undergrowth, then took the other. Oryx, the opportunity of a lifetime. To work with world-class leaders, to build a revolutionary company, to unleash the human potential for good. For good. Good health, good friends, good growth, Good money. Is our hunch paying off? Rx launched on July the 4th, 2011 with zero sales and grew to over $100 million in total sales in the next 36 months, from zero to $100 million. And I have no doubt that we'll total a billion soon and then on to a billion a year and up from there. I'm honored to be the chief mindset officer of this exploding new company. 
having weathered in my day lots of ups and downs. I think I'm qualified to guide you to build the attitudes necessary to succeed in this business and in life. I know what it's like to go to a mailbox full of bills that I knew I could not pay. I also know what it's like to go to a mailbox containing checks that took my breath away. I hope the success that I've achieved, knock on wood, can help me share an idea or strategy or technique that will be of value to you, not only in your Rx business, but in all areas of your life. That's my hope. I hope you're not as skeptical as I was about this very unique industry of network marketing. Yes, it has its share of startups and shutdowns, but Rx is here to stay. If you want to be part of a future legend, then join with us. In hindsight, I believe you'll be glad you did. I know you can do this. It won't be easy. You wouldn't want it to be. Welcome to Oryx.